Unexpected encounters and heart-stopping incidents. For some reason, gas stations attract some of the most disturbing moments ever caught on camera. Here's a list of the 50 most disturbing of them all. Sheriff Station, Jackson speaking. How can I help you? It's around 1.53 a.m. and the Carson Sheriff Station gets a 911 call from a store clerk. A criminal deputation. What's the address? Uh, Center Avenue Carson. I'm sorry? Center Avenue Carson. Okay. Some guy's causing a major public disturbance right at the gas pumps. He's yelling, making chaos, and just refuses to leave. Later identified as 34-year-old Arturo Cernas from Los Angeles, the guy is totally out of it. And so I want you to leave, but he is screaming and walking around the door. Carson Station deputies get the call and head over. When they arrive, it's a tense scene. You need to go, dude. What are you doing here? Huh? Sarnas gets caught off guard, but refuses to give up. What's in your pocket? Hey, nothing. Hey, put Don't your hands up. Trip. Put your hands up. It's put your hands up. What is it? Put your hands up. What is it? Hey, listen. Hey, you just got a force of bro. Put your hands up. Hey, don't reach for it. Hey, myself. Come on, stop this. Don't reach for it. Hey, get on the ground. Only after a whole minute of yelling from the police does Cernas get on his knees. Get on your knees! Story ended? Not quite. He refuses to put his hands on his head, searching for the phone in his right pocket. Then he puts it in his backpack. Let me tell you, cops don't like this messing around at all. Yeah, I'm gonna get him with the 40 if he goes in his pocket. This is left pocket, right? Yeah, left pocket. Leave your hands on your head! Suddenly, Sarnas pulls out a pistol from his left pant pocket. Leave your hands on your head! Cops react immediately. One fires a less lethal foam projectile and another discharges his service weapon. This is not your typical robbery. Seven armed people trying to rob your local gas station. Was it worth it? One busted his AK-47 by smacking it on the door repeatedly. Luckily, the door didn't crack open and the gun was not as reliable as it's always considered, but having such an armed group terrorizing gas stations is pretty terrifying. If you're worried about your job interview, take a look at this guy. Bro! Bro! Somehow he got a job at a gas station while being on something heavy. The dope dealer's shirt is a sign by itself. Yo, bro, can I get the toilet paper? Where, where, where? Poor customers weren't served this time. You, you wanna get are lost, faded. Like, yes, better? that's crazy, bro. You need to shut She's down. She's trying to get gas. I need toilet paper. This is a stark reminder to be careful when communicating with a sketchy person for the first time. But the job market is always on demand for specialists. And that's what you do. Yo! Yo! We need, she need gas and I want toilet paper. <laughs> Yo, my man is out! Get over here! Hey! Get over here! It's August 21st of 2020 and the show starts with a 911 call about a guy in the store. Some say he's got a knife. What part of you need to come in front of my unit you don't get? The police are on it fast. One officer gets there while the call's still happening. The guy later identified as 31-year-old Trayford Pellerin decides it's time to leave, but he's not dropping the knife. The chase begins in the middle of the road, a dangerous place to be. The officer shouts, trying to get him to safety, warning him of the rushing traffic. Those 18-wheelers show no mercy. Get on the ground! 
But Polarin keeps walking, seemingly in his own world, the officers after him on foot trying to use his taser. They scream at him to get on the ground, but Polarin's not listening. No, get on the ground! You scared me, this shit don't work, bitch! This shit don't work! He's gonna stab! More officers arrive and now it's a full-on pursuit. Polarin's still with that knife heading towards another store. Another problem is that the taser's not working. It's a bad night for Polarin. Be advised, knife is in his hand. Left hand, left hand. Get on the ground! Polarin nears the shell store with a knife in hand. Crucial moment. In this kind of situation, cops must react. 11 rounds are fired. Do not go in the store! Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> What's happening with this woman? This happened in Chicago. A woman drove a vehicle into a crowd of both people and other vehicles. She even dragged her boyfriend for a short period as well. Then as she slips her SUV, in the end, the woman gets arrested, but the pure chaos she caused will never be forgotten. Damn! 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 She flipped the whole truck! A crazy night in Phoenix, August 28, 2022, around 8.30 p.m. Reports of shots fired around 27th Avenue and Deer Valley Road. There's a guy near a motel and restaurant just off the I-17 going wild with a gun. Phoenix 911, where is your emergency? Hi, my name is Summit. At West Deer Valley, and I believe there's a man behind us in front of the firing an automatic weapon. Oh, that there? Huh? That, was that what I just heard right now? Yeah, right now. The following is like a scene from a SWAT operation. This dude brought the whole gear from Walmart. Helmet, ballistic vest, gas mask, knee pads. He's not messing around. He's got a rifle and is holding a Molotov cocktail. He steps outside and GTA is starting, firing at buildings, cars, and anything in sight. A white car pulls into the parking lot and the guy walks up to it and opens fire, killing a man and a woman inside. The other three people in the car bail out and run for their lives. But the suspect isn't done. He's roaming the parking lot, shooting randomly at empty cars. Then he heads to a restaurant full of people and throws the Molotov cocktail at the window. Luckily, it doesn't break and doesn't ignite. For the next few minutes, it's pure chaos. Bullets were everywhere, hitting innocent bystanders, cars, and buildings. And when the cops finally arrive, they're met with a bullet storm of gunfire. Two officers get hit. One manages to shoot back, but misses. One inch cop is trapped under fire and his buddies have to figure out how to get him out. They finally load him into a patrol Tahoe and rush him to the hospital. The shooting eventually stops and when the officers approach the suspect, they find a gunshot wound which the poor guy made by himself. Things took a wild turn at a quick trip store. Joe Williams, with a gun in hand, walks around the store, gun out, and even tells the clerk to call 911. 
When the cops show up, Williams doesn't back down. He fires shots inside the store and then steps out, still shooting. The cops had nothing to do but shoot back. A fierce exchange until Williams finally collapses. This guy has found the staff, pointed his gun, and smacked the staff person with the gun. Then got pushed back with water from a hose. Where did it all go wrong? They thought it was the perfect plan. It would have been great if the man with the red vehicle ran over with a torch to get the party started. Stop fueling your truck. That's what these guys mean when blocking the car from entering the gas station. They're probably too concerned about the crime rate of the gas stations we saw during this video. I know I am. A wild night in Baraboo, Wisconsin, October 9th of 2020. It's about 8.30 p.m. and the dispatch gets this call about a guy causing trouble at a residence. 26-year-old Alexander Bradley got into conflict with someone, slapped a phone out of their hand, and then, just like that, he's out of there. The caller says Alex has been dealing with drugs out of the basement, talking about working at home. While the cops are heading to the house, Alex tries to make a getaway in this maroon-colored car, but an officer finds him at a quick trip and where's Alex? Exactly hiding in the trunk of his car under a blanket. Like me when I was a kid, hiding from the monsters. We just, we literally just came from the downtown area of what he was robbed. He's very upset right now. Hey, keep your hands right there, Alex. Okay? Alex, don't do anything stupid. Keep your hands there. The officers try to get him out, but Alex does not. The cops have to drag him out and Alex is all confused, claiming he's been robbed earlier that night. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Alex, okay, 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 okay. Alex, well, when we tell you, get out of the vehicle, get out of the vehicle. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Get on the ground. I'm trying to. Get on the ground. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Put your arm down your back. Okay. We'll tell you to get out of the vehicle. I was get, to. get back in the car! Jordan, Jordan I was trying to get out of the vehicle. I'm blocking it. What am I doing wrong? I didn't do anything. Jordan? Yes. Mom. What do you have anything on you that's gonna stick me, poke me, hurt me? No, sir. Why are you why are you being so aggressive? What am I Mom? Mom, yes. what are they doing? Why are they being well, so aggressive? I didn't Alex, do anything we'll wrong. Out in no, okay. he pulled, they dragged me out of the fucking yeah. car. Okay, okay. Did I not? What you did. Alex, I'm trying to cooperate. Down. I'm trying to. Hold but on, he Hold on. I want to double cuff these before they tighten. All right. Okay. Nothing else on you. All right. No, there's nothing on me. I was okay. robbed earlier tonight yes. by Mark Anderson. I literally was robbed by Mark Anderson. There's a police report. Check your files. Yeah, that one. Nope, good. that one's not locked. 
<laughs> I was just robbed and beat by your co your co-worker. Does it lock? There we go. That's your lock. I'm not resisting. I'm not okay. resisting. Say so you were. I know, but you were trying to make it seem like it though. Alex? I was just robbed. Okay. I <laughs> but they're treating me like I'm a suspect. <laughs> Get them up. <laughs> yep, stand up. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm working with you. I'm working with Let's you. Go over here. Yeah, nothing. I'll no, throw under I promise. Me. I promise you. I promise you. I'm not resisting, and there's nothing on me that will poke you. There's no weapons. There's no nothing. No drugs. No nothing. No. Else. I don't do those. Back at the residence, the cops do a search and find narcotics in the basement right near Alex's stuff. Right. What is your name, officer? We'll talk. Well, I'm trying to talk to you right now. Am I not? What am I get? But guess what? Most of the charges get dismissed, except he's sentenced to four years of probation, has to pay some fines, and maintains absolute sobriety. These Memphis gas stations are a war zone. Who shoots whom? Why did it all begin? And why does literally everyone at the gas station wear a ski mask? Unfortunately, this is quite typical in Tennessee. Mind-blowing seeing the mom walk into that place with her baby while a bunch of guys wearing masks with firearms standing around. That's a street lesson. Let's hope that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger works with this woman. Another wild video from Baraboo, Wisconsin. It's about 26-year-old Taylor Nicole DiBella, and she's building gingerbread houses. What? I will explain. It's a routine traffic stop and Taylor's driving without any taillights. A simple offense, but cops start asking questions about a bunch of packages in her car. Because, I don't know, why, why are we being asked if we have guns? Well, the, stop right there. First off, you're, you're driving without any taillights. Second I'm, off, we keep getting reports of people stealing packages off the porches, where all these boxes come from. We were building gingerbread houses. I got them out the recycling. I just stopped right there and got some. Her explanation was that she was building gingerbread houses and got the boxes from recycling. It's a little sussy, but things get much more interesting. The reports have been flooding in about packages being swiped off porches and the police are connecting the dots now and there's a 15 year old wearing a ski mask in the back seat. Cause he keeps his hair down. So he's wearing a ski mask cause he keeps his hair down? And it's cold outside, yes it's cold. He does he's in a one, car, why would he be He's the one who does my delivery Do you have a driver's license me. on you? No sir, my mom does, can I please just have her? No, yeah, what's your name? Mommy, please come here. I'm sending you my location. Are all these boxes empty? Some of them are. Which ones aren't? I don't know. There was some in the trunk. Can we look at them? Yes. Can you get your info for me? Yeah. No, Mommy. Can you open the doors for What's me? What's your name? I'm scared, Taylor. Can I please step out? Come. Just sit down. Just calm down. Taylor's story starts to crumble. She's scared and anxious, pleading with the officers and asking for her mom. Mommy, please come here last fast. Name. Last name. Can you spell your last name for me? Yeah, 
Can you open the doors for us? You could just pull them, I'm sorry. Last name, please. Taylor. You Nicole. Said Nicole? Yes. Sit down. Hold on, I need to breathe, I'm sorry. Sit down. I have bad anxiety. Mommy, can you tell them? Sit down. I'm trying to. You're not. I'm sitting you down. You need to start Mommy. listening, okay? I'm trying to, sir, I'm sorry. Taylor and Nicole? My anxiety's really bad, I'm about to faint. Taylor and Nicole? Yes, sir. That's your last name? Yes, sir. N-I-C? H-O-L-E. Date of birth? 12-21-1999. Alright, at this point, go ahead and step out for me. Okay. Put your phone right there for me. Mommy! Put your what's, phone right what's there. What's going on? You're being detained as well. Mommy! Put your no, hands Mommy, go to my house! Come get my phone! Put your my, hands together. My boyfriend, your, my dog! Put the back of your, put the back of your hands Can together. Can you guys my mom my location, please? She doesn't need any location. Yes, she does. How old are you? I'm 23. Alright, well then she don't need to know. Mommy, please come give me a... I'm gonna go run this. And uh, that's her info. I'll see if I can get something for him. This is the Amazon Yeah. Dude, they got like 20 packages in there. Sit down right here for me, okay? It's not one but two lives at risk after the accident. Okay, you don't have to answer questions if you don't want to. If you decide to answer questions, you can stop at any time. If you want to talk to a lawyer before asking, answering any questions, you can also do that. So right now the car is being seized because uh, you have a bunch of stolen packages in it, okay? Um, he's under arrest and you're under arrest. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Did, well, I mean, how many houses did you guys hit? Yes, I don't. Because you were literally throwing packages from houses that you stole from into other houses' front yards. No, I was not. But you're driving. Why? So what? I mean, I apologize, sir. I don't want to be in any more trouble. I'll do whatever. <laughs> Here's one hell of a show from a Saudi Arabia gas station. Just look how the fire went up. It's good that it happened in a country full of petroleum. They won't notice a difference. Luckily, there were no people and no one got hurt. The following scary situation could happen to anyone. This person smashed the window out and got inside the store, but was met with fierce resistance. Acting like the staff guy here is always a risk, so remember that action is not always the best decision. Before continuing, what was the worst gas station accident you've ever encountered? What was your role in that situation, and what did you do? Let us know in the comments section. Now let's move on to the next one. So let's talk about a wild night on July 3rd of 2023 in Fairfield Township, Ohio. Officer Richard Roy cruised near State 4 and Greenland Road when he spotted this 2003 Toyota Corolla blazing past him, 80 miles per hour in a 55 zone. Officer Roy flips on his emergency lights thinking it's just another routine traffic stop, but this Corolla is not stopping. It keeps going until it finally pulls into the United Dairy Farmers gas station off State Route 4. Now Roy's probably thinking, what's up with this driver? Huh? So what do you mean stop? Didn't stop because I had my lights on, turned my siren on. I got you at 80 oh, miles per hour. I was not. Yep, and I got you on camera and everything back there. I took you with the LIDAR. You're on the far left lane. He walks up to the car and meets the driver, 26-year-old Alicia. Roy's like, why didn't you stop sooner? She was just trying to get home. Then Roy looks in the car and sees not one, not two, but six kids. 
And of course, no seat belts, safety restraints, nothing. It's, so know, you can't have two I people know, in the front I'm seat. Right there. I had to get my kids, I had to get my sister's kids. It's been a long night. Okay. I'm just trying to get home. I well, you got to have your driver's license proof insurance, please. I don't. You don't have any? It gets worse. There's the smell of alcohol. He asks Elijah about drinking, and she admits to having a beer at a fireworks display. What's more, Alicia's got a warrant out for her arrest, and her license is suspended. I'm gonna ask you, have you been drinking today? Uh, I had, yeah, but... Huh? I had, I'm gonna leave out you to 3341 Hamilton You had a beer? Just uh, earlier. Just squad earlier. heading okay. to that location. Unknown problem. Someone... Called so when was that? Someone's bloody. It's been about two hours ago. Just one beer. Okay, that was the, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to run you through some tests. Okay. All right. Do you have anything wrong with your eyes or anything? You are correct. Uh, I had like two hours of sleep. I have okay. twins. So. On the driveway now. That's understandable. Okay. <laughs> Just follow it. Don't move your head. All right. You still can see it? Yes. Good. Some type of pain injury? I still can't rotate, you know. Subject with a hand injury. We're all right now. I'm out with it. Six five, that's coming okay. Down. Still sticking to the same story. Are you clear on that? Sobriety tests don't go well, and she refuses to take a breath test. OVI, six counts of endangering children, plus citations for speeding, driving with a suspended license, and not wearing a seatbelt. I had three hours of sleep last night and worked a nine-hour shift today. All right. That's, I mean, that's understandable, but no, you're doing 80 and a 55. You got kids in the front seat. What happens if you get in a wreck? Well, there's there's some clues that I've seen, so I'm going to place you under arrest for OVI, okay? And we're going to take care of the kids. We'll, we'll get those taken care of, okay? Wait, so I'm going to need you to place your hands behind your back, okay? Wait. And then I'm going to... And then child endangering. This might have happened to anyone. A car problem ends in a severe crash at the gas station. As long as we know, no one got hurt. This is one massive explosion from Crevedia, a suburb of Bucharest. Two explosions at a liquefied petroleum gas fueling station caused a major disaster. The first explosion triggered a huge fire, leading officials to evacuate a 750-meter radius. An ominous remark on what might happen if the security measures aren't taken properly. So this guy, a known regular at the gas station in Oakland City, walks in and buys some beer. Nothing too out of the ordinary, but here's where it takes a turn for the crazy. The guy heads back to his truck, parked right near the gas pumps, cracks open a beer and gets in. What happens next is straight out of a movie. This dude, he floors it. He really guns the engine, whips his truck into the parking lot, spinning 180 degrees, and bam, drives right into the gas station. Luckily, no one's hurt. Obviously, the gas station surveillance video films it all. In a bit of a panic, the driver tries to yank off the truck's license plate. Fast forward 13 hours and in the police station, 24-year-old William says he just wanted to show off how easily his new tires spin, but he hit a curb and lost control and that's how he ended up crashing into the gas station. 
Understandable. Have a nice day. This will hit a $5,000 personal recognition bond. Orders to steer clear of the store and submit to alcohol and drug testing. So this is Detroit, a Tuesday afternoon around 4.15 p.m., a gas station on Grand River. The guy pulls into the station in a black Jeep Cherokee and is not there for gas. He swings the car around an island with pumps and then he takes aim between the pumps. Lives are taken in the blink of an eye, but the gunman floors it, fleeing southeast on Grand River. The license plate on that Jeep Cherokee is invalid and the guy is gone. So many questions after watching this one. Why was it going so fast? Which direction was it coming from? How? The damage is impressive. Two gas tanks and one whole car. Hopefully no one got hurt. It's July 31st of 22. The clock's just ticked past 3 a.m. and we're at Norco Market and Liquor on 6th Street. A BMW rows into the parking lot and it's not just a casual stop. Inside are four guys with a plan, but let's just say it's not the best laid plan. While one of them holds the door, Belvin heads inside, armed and ready to pull off a robbery. Now inside the store is the store clerk. He's there doing paperwork, keeping the place open late, but he's not your average clerk. When the robber wields his firearm, the clerk is quick to react. Belvin is out of there, screaming, rushing for the getaway car, but the escape plan hits a snag. The robbers end up at the hospital. Call the police, mate. That's what I'll be doing. Oh, fuck him. Fuck him, mate. Fuck him. These guys thought they were filling in petroleum in the fuel filler neck. A silly mistake cost these guys more than 500 bucks. Apparently Australian fuel pumps can't be locked on. Someone had to hold the handle open the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, hey, Charlie, what you, roll wrong? your car forward hey. and roll what's the wrong? back forward too. Yeah. In the car! In the end, the situation ended up quite good. No one got hurt and no fire for this video. We gotta speak. <laughs> Up. It's about 2.45 a.m., a time when most of the world is asleep, but not in Galesburg, Michigan. What's that? Back up. What do you mean, back up? Cops get this 911 call from the gas station. There's an emergency and they need the police pronto. The county deputy wastes no time. He gets back to the scene like lightning and there waiting for him is 22-year-old R.V. Johnson. I need people now, a subject with a knife. I'll shoot you, dude. I'll shoot you. Don't f do it. He's not as clever as Carl Johnson. He's got a knife and he's not afraid to use it against a cop with a gun. I need people now. I'll... Don't do it, dude. Don't do it. Just put it down. Just put it down. Things escalate quickly. Johnson lunges at the deputy, knife in hand, but even in the chaos, there's an immediate switch to trying to save a life. I'll f shoot you, dude. Shoot you. Don't do it. Galesburg and Charleston fire. Rescue teams rush in, doing everything they can to give Johnson life saving efforts. But despite their best attempts, it's just not enough. We can't show what happened next due to YouTube guidelines, but you can pretty much imagine everything. Subject down. Don't get fired near the gas station. Civilians in Nataro, Kazakhstan learned it the hard way.
Hopefully no one got hurt. The cameraman was so scared we barely got any proper content from watching the video. Homie thought if he yelled at me, you I would leave. leave. This is not Eli, your spot. You don't talk to me. You need to go back in line. You don't line. talk to me. You need to go you back in line. To this guy's totally lost it after he thought this mother of four cut him off at Sam's Club gas station. Get in line. Basically, that's all he's saying. Stop talking to me. Get in line! Stop talking to me. Like everybody else, get in line! Okay, what is your problem? Go. Get in line! Go in line. Go wherever you want. Get I don't in care. line! I don't care. Get in line! I have my four kids in the car. Get so in I line! A stark reminder of how angry and dangerous can a random person be. On December 9th, 2019, a gas station surveillance cameras captured a hell breaking loose. A fuel tank explodes out of nowhere, leaving a massive crater in its wake. Nearby cars are severely damaged. The speed at which those flames jet out is crazy. That's a rocket engine right there. What can I say? It's all written on the screen. Things get wild in gas stations. If not the police shooting, then the angry Karen disturbing the queue. She was probably trying to get a battery accusation. Uh, can you go, ma'am? Cause uh, my kid's crying in the back. My kid's crying in the back. I know you can hear me. You love making a scene, huh, Karen? <laughs> Miss Karen? Everyone's staring at you, Miss Karen? My kid's crying in the back. If you could just move aside, that'd be great. America's a wild country, but there's a place for improvement. We should do better as a society. Yeah, she ain't moving. She's, she, she ain't moving, guys. She ain't moving. It's Chicago on July 26th around 4.10. A gas station in the Chatham neighborhood. Just an ordinary afternoon until an all-black Dodge Durango pulls up. Three people jump out and suddenly it's chaos. They start shooting towards the gas station parking lot. Caught in this unexpected and deadly gunfire is 31-year-old Adam Bernoy. He's just standing there, probably unaware of what will happen. The bullets find their mark, striking him. But it doesn't stop there. They hit him with their SUV on their getaway. Imagine the shock and panic at the moment. He's rushing to the medical center, but it's a grim outcome. Now this conversation between a robber and a cashier in Germany is quite interesting. Hi. Hi. Have to admit the woman is insanely brave. Germans are built from another material. Ja, klar, das ist das Schlüssel. Mach ich nicht. 
So imagine you're just out minding your own business, getting your car washed at a gas station. Sounds like a typical day, right? But for one man in Baton Rouge, this ordinary trip turned into a scene straight out of a nightmare. This isn't just random gunfire, it's the start of a siege that would leave three police officers dead. And this guy right in the middle of it all captures the whole thing on his cell phone. The video is something out of a war zone. You hear the first shot as police move in. The guy's filming cops, squarely moving across the gas station, trying to get a handle on the situation. He describes seeing a sheriff's car behind his, its windows getting shot out. Then he spots the gunman, ski mask, black clothes, a beige-colored gun. The man's recounting is chilling. He's right there behind his truck as this chaos unfolds around him. Cop cars are screaming into position and a civilian caught up in the crossfire just floors his SUV and escapes. Then it's just an eruption of gunfire. This guy in his car, he's scared, understandably. He doesn't know where the shots are coming from, says it's like 25 to 30 rounds. And then the shootout stops. The killer's down. He stops filming, gets his truck in gear, drives across a ditch and just gets out of there. Why did you leave me? The girl asks. Well, you can clearly see why. Emotions have a disturbing twist when it comes to relationship endings. Dory, she can hear me perfectly I fine. Can hear you. She can hear me perfectly I fine. Hear you. Girl, please. Can you please come back? Y'all see, y'all see why. Hello was enough for me to be honest, but my heart dropped when I saw the kid. Didn't even seem phased, she's used to it. Let's hope she'll have a better life when she grows up. In the post-Elon Musk world, we believe technology is everything. Well, sometimes even minor technology like a car wash can go wrong. And you're left without a windshield. Luckily, the dash cam was on. The gas station will pay for it because of the dash cam footage. Without the dash cam footage, the gas station could fight you to the nail that your windshield was already broken when you entered the car wash. So here's a story from Philadelphia. Local gas station, a regular spot where people fill up their cars. The victim, a 30-year-old man, a father to a young daughter, pulls in. He's just there to pump gas, unaware of what will happen next. 
As he's pumping gas, a red sedan, a 2009 Mazda 3 with New Jersey plates, pulls up behind his car. Two men get out, one with a handgun, the other with an assault rifle. What happens next is far more real and horrifying than a thriller. Men start firing at the victim, chasing him around the gas station. The victim's trying to escape, running for his life, but the gunmen are unstoppable. The suspects run back to the red sedan where a third accomplice is waiting. They drive off, leaving behind shock and despair, and guess what? Suspects are still unidentified. It wasn't enough to ram down the fuel pump and slam the wall behind, but the best part is the driver picking up the fuel back up and like, no big deal, I'll just put this back while it's on fire and be on my way. This is what happens when a drunk man meets with a car, and it happened quite positively because we already know that those underground reservoirs sometimes explode. Another crazy fire extinguisher accident. Damage to car, $465. Cost to recharge fire extinguishers, $1,354. Cost of cleanup of the site, $2,277. Employees that actually know what to do? Priceless. It's a night of high tension at Pinellas Park. Everything starts with a call to the Pinellas Park Police Department. There's a domestic disturbance going down. A woman and man are involved and it's getting serious. The woman, feeling threatened, locks herself in the bathroom at the gas station. The cops are on their way, ready to handle the situation. First on the scene is Officer Dare. He's trying to make contact with the suspect, a 24-year-old guy named Calvin Brockington, but Carl's not in the mood to talk. Instead, he walks up to the officer right there in the gas station and shots are fired. Officer down, Carl, not Johnson, ain't stopping there. He dashes into the store, snatches a man's keys, and the situation spirals even further. Officer Gavin arrives and she's met with gunfire. She fires back but misses. Then Carl carjacks a vehicle at the gas station, drives towards Officer Gavin, and peels out of there. Carl is on the run now, heading east on Olmerton Road. Cops on his tail. It's a high-speed chase out of a movie, but this is a real life and dangerous. Finally, the cops catch up with Carl. They confront him and this time he's not getting away. They take him into custody, ending a night of chaos and danger. Back at the Circle K, Officer dares rush to the hospital. Thankfully, his injuries aren't life-threatening, and he's expected to fully recover. Luckily for the officer, his injuries aren't life-threatening. <laughs> the 
This is Hurricane Charlie, one of the most intense hurricanes in America's history. He's trailing a gas station in Florida with its ferocious winds. We have to respect the guy filming because he has some nerves. It's May 4th, around 11.20 a.m. on the Gulf Freeway. The HPD Narcotics Division is in the middle of a multi-agency narcotics investigation. As part of this, the HPD Highway Interdiction Unit pulls over a vehicle at a gas station. The driver is a 23-year-old named Jimmy Bryan. He is not moving around. He's looking down a little. Officers approach the car, talk to Brian, and ask him to leave. What's up, brother? What are you doing? You a mark? But Brian's got other plans. He suddenly pulls out a weapon and opens fire on the officers. It's a situation that escalates in a split second. Why don't we do this? Put your hands. Come on. Come on. Hit! Officer Jay Sally, who was right there in the line of fire, got hit. A bullet strikes him in the lower pelvic area. His partner, Officer M. McMurtry, is there too, but he's unharmed. Amid this chaos, Officers Sally and McMurtry return fire, hitting Brian. Sally, wounded, is rushed to Memorial Hermann Southeast Hospital by private vehicle, while Brian is taken by paramedics to another hospital, both in stable condition. I've been hit. Jared. As for Brian, he's now facing two counts of aggravated assault of a public servant. This isn't just a routine traffic stop gone wrong. It's a reminder of the dangers lurking at what might seem like everyday police work. You don't have any ID on you? Here, why don't you do me a favor? Take off the seatbelt and step out. Did you just hear me? Look at me. Take off your seatbelt. Are you requesting me? I'm telling you to take off your seatbelt and step out. Why don't we do this? Put your hands. Now this guy acts much more actively. Gets inside, shoot the shots, grab the cash, and get outside. Simple as that. Making them go faster by shooting around is the perfect strategy to scare the person out. It's a no country for old men story. All right, here's a wild ride from Cleveland on a Saturday night. A Chevy Blazer zipping down I-90, going 20 over the limit. A state trooper spots it, lights flashing, but the Blazer's driver hits the gas instead of stopping. A high-speed chase right through the city streets is on. Back to the 
This isn't just a quick sprint, a full-blown five-minute adrenaline rush. The blazers were weaving and zooming, finally trying to make a turn onto St. Clair Avenue. But the driver messes up the turn, flips the truck, and slams into another car at a gas station. Three passengers in the blazer were shaken up with just minor injuries. The driver, though, got a felony warrant hanging over his head. Now he's adding OVI and fleeing to his rap sheet. And get this, one of the ladies in the car is also wanted, plus she's caught with some drug stuff. The tragedy never comes alone. Oh, you guys want me to I don't know, I was just gonna go. You're giving me a ride. Please, my girl from the hospital. Over here. Over here. Put your hand behind your back. I'm driving out of trouble, sir. Yeah. You're already saturated by a cancer. I'm in sharp. Tell me how you're going. I'll feel everything. Hey, Come over here. Okay, so that's safe. Sorry, I didn't run. I didn't run, please. Please, sorry, I didn't run. Please, sorry, I didn't run. Ow! Ow! It was a peaceful 1996 when suddenly that peace was rocked. A call came in about a car speeding recklessly, nearly causing accidents. The cop catches up and it's bad. The driver's weaving into oncoming traffic, almost hitting cars head on. Turns out the guy's having a psychotic episode. Then things get wilder. The car's speeding at 110 miles per hour, dodging stop six. Finally one takes out a tire, but the chase barrels into town. Near a gas station, cops know they've got to end this in fast. Another explosion. The car is near flames and the driver lost in his own world doesn't realize the danger. Riley and the other officers risked their lives, pulling the guy out with all the explosions around. Luckily, no lives were lost. This one's a good always wear your seatbelt ad. And these safety bags definitely worked solid. Luckily modern cars are pretty impressive when it comes to safety. I hate to tell it, but that girl looks like an insurer's worst nightmare. Another car crashed in the gas station and the person on the left was extremely lucky to avoid the crash. Speedy reflexes and definitely his lucky day. Well, my job is done. Guess I'll head back into the station with this here money. This is not how to pay for gas, but it's obvious why the guy got so nervous. That lady has something in her that drives a man insane. 
Thanks for joining, and stay tuned for more. Remember, vigilance and awareness can be our best companions in the most routine places.